Hello, everyone. A very good evening to all of you. So all of you must be aware that uh, NABARD has released the cutoff of this year's uh, NABARD grade A examination. Cutoff of both prelims and mains has been uh, released by NABARD on its website. So here in this video, we are going to analyze that cutoff as well as the type of questions that were asked in this year's examination. And we will try to find out the or, or figure out the best strategy for us uh, to crack this examination. So first of all, uh, we will begin with the prelims examination. You are aware that in prelims, uh, you have to face around uh, 200 questions. And out of those 200 questions, uh, only 100 questions forms the merit sections. Like your uh, general awareness, economic and social issues, and your ARD, agriculture and rural development. There will be 20 questions from gen, uh, general awareness, 40 from ARD, ESI, and 40 from ARD, agriculture and rural development. So there will be total 100 questions. And mask, the marks scored in these uh, 100 questions will only form the merit. Okay. So here, in the rest of the section, you just have to score the qualifying marks. Suppose in reasoning, if you can solve three questions correctly, that's enough in English. 11 is enough. Computer, only three questions is enough. Font, only three. Likewise, you can see the qualifying marks. Okay. If you can uh, score these marks in this section, font reasoning and all those, okay, you can easily qualify. But your merit will be decided by this section. Okay. In this section also, your merit will be decided by the overall score that you score uh, in these 100 questions, as well as you have to score a minimum marks, minimum qualifying marks also in these three sections separately. For example, in general awareness, you just, you have to correctly solve at least three questions. In economic and social issues, it is four and ARD five. These are very small numbers. Okay. You will be able to solve. Okay. So this is, this is the glimpse of the pattern of the prelims. Okay. Or most of you must be aware of this if you are preparing for NABAD. Let's move on to the cutoff. What is the cutoff of this year? This year, the cutoff was 46. 46 out of 100. It means that you can, if you have scored, it was 45 point something, I think, but I am taking the higher uh, the whole uh, that uh, round of round of figure. So it is 46 out of 100. In the last year, it was 42. So around same three to four marks difference is there. Okay. Now look at the questions that were asked from the uh, merit section. You know that uh, in merit, 20 questions are from GK, 40 from ESI, and 40 from uh, agriculture and rural development. Okay. So, uh, what are these numbers? You must be wondering, what are these numbers? Okay. These are the number of questions which were from current affair portion. Okay. From current affair portion. So, out of 20 questions that were asked in your GK, 15 were from current affair. Current affair, that too, directly from the current. Okay. Directly directly from current affair. Similarly, in economic and social issues, out of 40 questions, 28 questions were, were directly from current affair. And agriculture and rural development also, out of 40, 30 questions were from core agriculture, where you, you will have to read books. Okay, agriculture related books. And 10 questions from rural development, and that too were from entirely from current affairs. Okay, so what are the topics that we we need to study from this current affair? First of all, let us see the importance of current affairs here. How many total questions had appeared? 53 total questions had appeared from current affairs and your cutoff was 46. So just by studying current affairs carefully, you can clear the cutoff. And if you are an agriculture graduate, if you include agriculture here also, total 83 questions were from current affairs and agriculture. Okay, only 17 questions from outside from where these 17 questions had appeared. Let us uh, see that also. Okay. Here, you can see here, in GK, 15 questions were from uh, current affair. Rest 5 questions here. And the rest 12 questions here in your economic and social issues. Okay, 20 plus 12, 40. So, out of these 17 questions, most of the questions were either from your uh, flagship schemes, 
flagship schemes. Flagship schemes are the very major schemes of government, okay, which are talked about uh, internationally. These schemes are talked about, like your uh, Narega, the largest uh, employment guarantee uh, program in the world, like your NRLM, the largest poverty elevation program in the world, and also the most successful program. All these schemes are directly mentioned in your syllabus. Okay, so these are from the either from flagship schemes or they were indirectly asked from a, a current affair, either from a flagship scheme or indirectly from current affair. How indirectly they were asked from current affair? Let us under, try to understand this with an example. This is a question that I had posted in your Telegram group also. I, uh, in the, if you have joined, you must have solved this. Uh, this question asked about the composition of the selection committee, committee of uh, election commission. Okay. The members which are in the selection committee to select the chief election commissioner and election uh, commissioners. Okay. So here, prime minister, chief justice, cabinet, and leader of opposition. So here, the correct answer is B. That is the prime minister, cabinet minister, and leader of opposition. Okay. Now, this question. Here you can see that this act was passed in 2023. Now, if this question appears in your this year's examination, that will become a current affair question, but that will we can call that the indirectly. Why indirectly? Because this has happened one year before. Okay. But still it will form part of current affair. Why? Because general elections are taking place this year. Okay. And the uh, election commission has a major role in conducting the general election. And recently, two new uh, election commissioners were appointed by the government. And in last year, the process of appointment of election commission, uh, chief election commissioner and election commissioner were changed by the government of India through an act of the parliament. Okay, this is the major event linked with the previous year, but happening right now. Also. So like this, these kind of questions were there in your examination that I told you that indirectly from the current affair. Okay. You can easily link these things from the static. Okay. So this was the uh, total overview of your prelims last year. Okay. So talking about uh, agriculture, the level of agriculture portions in Nabad is very easy. If you can say that uh, if you try to compare this, uh, I would tell you that if you are an agriculture graduate or graduate in any discipline of agriculture and you are appearing for this examination without any preparation, in agriculture, okay, and you are solving 15 questions correctly, then it won't be called as a good performance. Now you can judge yourself the level of questions in this. For non agricultural student, yes, you need to study a little bit, but that too, not everything you have to study, just uh, there are some specific uh, topics or areas from where questions appear in Nabar. Usually, they uh, 10 to 15 questions appear every year from those topics. All those things will be dealt uh, in our objective section of Nabad objective section in our group. If you have not joined, you can join there also. If you want, if you're interested, you want to practice. Okay. Now, this is the prelims uh, analysis of last year, 2022. Okay. In a similar way, these are the current affair portion. You can find here that 42 portions were from current affair and the rest uh, 35 from agriculture. Total 77 portions were from current affair and agriculture altogether. You can see here uh, that uh, total number of current affair questions here were also very high. And in the last year also, it was 53. This year, 50, it was 53, higher than the last year. And this is the general trend for all the examination that are being conducted in our country for any government examination. Okay, that the portion or the focus on the uh, of the examination is shifting towards the dynamic portion, not from the static portion. Okay. Only bookish knowledge is not going to help you track any examination, whether it's NAMAR or any other examination. And this will keep on. With every passing year, you will find more number of portions from dynamic section or from the current affairs section. It depends on your ability to link the current happenings with the statics. Okay. If you can link that, you will be able to solve much higher than uh, other candidates. Okay. So this year also, it is expected that uh, uh, more than 53 questions will be from current affair. Even if it goes lower, it won't go less than 50. Okay. More than 50 means at least 60 questions will be from this section. Yeah. 
Okay. So that's all about uh, prelims. Now let's talk about mains. Regarding mains, uh, before we uh, discuss further, uh, it is highly important to start your preparation of main uh, NABAD mains examination right now. If you are trying to uh, or if you plan to appear for this examination this year, don't only prepare for prelims. Simultaneously, you have to prepare for mains examination also. Because between prelims and mains, you will have very less time. At most 30 days times so you will have. Okay, and mains is all about uh, your uh, drafting skill. Okay, your drafting skill, your uh, thought process alignment, and your typing skill. Because you know that uh, in NABAD, you have to type your answers. Okay, it, it is uh, uh, the exam is conduct, conducted online. You have to type your answers. Okay. So typing a skill has become one of the most important skills to clear this examination. Apart from that, if for any uh, written examination, drafting and thought process is very important. So that's the thing you have to practice from today itself. Okay, because it's the marks scored in your mains examination. Based on that only, you will qualify. Okay, prelims is just a qualifying examination for your mains. And mains plus interview marks will decide your merit. Finally, talking about uh, pattern of uh, mains, there will be 100 marks out of 200, 50 percent or 100 marks will be uh, from paper one, that is English paper. Okay, here there will be three questions. You have to solve all the three questions. And uh, out of three, one question will be from essay, definitely from essay. One will be to write a letter. One will be from precise. Okay, all these things can uh, easily be solved, uh, especially essay and precise can be solved just by reading the editorials and newspapers and uh, giving some time to your practice. Okay, So all these practices will be done shortly. Uh, I think in a few days, uh, I will tell you uh, about uh, a mentorship program uh, I will start. And there I will tell you how to do that. Okay, you can join that if you're interested. Uh, next paper two is uh, off, off your uh, economic and social issues and rural development. There, there will be 30 questions, 30 objective questions, and six descriptive questions. Out of uh, these 30 questions will form 50% 50 50 of your marks, that is 50 marks. And uh, these descriptive six questions will form the rest of the 50 marks. So here, these 50 marks and uh, this one, paper one, this 100 marks in English. Okay, 150 marks are descriptive paper. For that, I'm telling you to do practice or start practicing right now. It's less about how much you know, it's more about how much you express or how well you express. And one more thing I have to add here that it's more about how good you are in type <laughs> because you have to yeah, type your answer. So uh, you need practice, you have to do practice. Okay, so the cutoff of your mains examination in this year was uh, 129 out of 200 and the final cut of one, 173. That is uh, your mains plus interview. Okay, 200 marks is for mains and 50 marks is for interview. Out of total, 250, uh, 173 was the cut off. Okay, similarly last year also, 172. It's almost uh, similar, 131 last year. Uh, in mains 129 this year okay so now let's see uh the kind of portions that were asked in mains also mains objective you consider it was it is of 50 marks out of this 50 marks you can see 13 question one were from current affair in your rural development and esi and 25 marks were from agriculture so 50 percent of the weightage in your uh, mains examination in objective section was from agriculture. Last year, the weightage was low, but that weightage was made up with more number of portions in your current affairs section. Here also static portion is asked, very limited questions from the stat uh, static portion. That too were from major schemes like in Narega, Pradhan Mantri, Awas Yojana, NABARD, you will have to study about NABARD now if you are preparing for uh, examination of NABARD. So from all these things. So objective also is majorly from agriculture and your current affairs. Okay. 
Next is your descriptive section. The descriptive section is of 50 marks. Here, there will be two portions that will carry 15 marks each. Both these portions are compulsory. You have to attend both the portions. Out of these two, one will be definitely from your agriculture and other will be from rural or social issues. Okay. Here, yeah, last year it was money lender and institutional credit. Okay. Why uh, in rural India, why still money lenders are prevailing uh, or the farmers prefer to take loan from money lenders and they don't go for institutional credits. And this was, they asked the reason behind that and all these things. Okay. This is a very obvious question. And one question from agriculture that was from a extension education objective methods in principle. Very obvious. In 10 marks question, you will face four questions. Out of these four, you have to attend only two questions. That is just like our graduation examination. So out of uh, these, you will face at least one question from agriculture and that too is also very predictable. Agroforestry, every year, every alternate year questions arise from this. Very predictable questions are there. If you practice, it can be solved very easily. Similarly, all, the rest of the portion will be very familiar, like financial inclusion, demographic safety in India. This itself is a current affair portion because United Nations Population Fund keeps on releasing reports. Even Navar keeps on uh, releasing reports. There, they talk about demographic shift in India, the past shift as well as the future shifts. Okay, our future and future, what is going to happen? Okay, all these things they talk about these things. If you keep in touch with those reports, you can easily right and uh, right in an effective manner okay if, if you just write bookish things you won't get good marks okay you have to uh, link the current events or current statistics with your answers okay then only you will get your answer will appear fresh and you will get more marks okay? like similarly financial inclusion this is evergreen topics and and directly mentioned in your uh, syllabus also demographic shift is also directly mentioned and problems in marketing of agriculture produce. Like uh, these only, you will post, you will face questions. Very general questions will be asked. Okay. So this is all about uh, the pattern of examination. Now, I hope that you must have understood uh, where you have to focus and how you have to prepare for this examination. Here in our uh, Telegram group, also we are conducting daily quiz for uh, AFO. Uh, in the evening session and uh, for Nabad uh, in the morning session. Okay, if you want to solve those questions, you can join here also. And uh, Nabad, Nabad uh, uh, this year, the objective was started just one or two days back, only 10 to 15 questions, not on even 10, I think five to seven questions we have solved uh, till now. So it was started only one or two days ago. You can join there if you are preparing for Nabad. All the portions will be based on the current affair on the latest syllabus. AFO we have been doing uh, since March, and I think 50% of the syllabus we have completed through objective. Very soon we will start round two also. Round one is going on after 50% yeah, is over. We will start a revision that is round two. That also we will be starting. You can, if you are preparing for AFO also, you can join there. So you can just uh, type this uh, in your telegram. Uh, app you will be linked to our group or you can click on the link that is given in the description box okay that's all from my side uh, 